So I thought I'd do a couple more problems uh, for you. Uh, this is uh, acetaminophen, um, another analgesic or painkiller, and then ethyl butyrate. And I thought I'd start it off without the table uh, so you could see like how it goes from the very beginning, like from scratch, right? So we have acetaminophen, and it says it, it, this is the mass percent, and what we want to do is calculate its empirical formula. And so what, what's the first thing you have to do, right? If you don't have anything else in front of you, I generally recommend then write out the table. You need one row, right, for every element. So I would generally start with carbon, right, then hydrogen, and then nitrogen, and then oxygen. And then I would draw my lines like this, right? And I just do that to stay organized. Now, you don't have to do it this way. And then the first column is the mass in grams for a 100 gram sample if you have right percentages. So when you have percentages, you assume a 100 gram sample. So then you're going to have 63.56 grams of carbon, right? And then you're going to have um, 6 grams of hydrogen and 9.27 grams of nitrogen. And then uh, 21.17 grams of oxygen. Now, for each one of these, you'll be converting it over to its uh, number of moles. So what I'm going to do is draw a line here. And a lot of times, I, I, <laughs> see my lines are horrible. Um, a lot of times I don't even write it. I just know at, after having done it, like when you practice these, you know you're just dividing by the molar mass to get to the moles. So it's okay on this kind of calculation when you have just so many of them. Maybe set the first one up just to make sure you're getting it right. And then all the others, you're basically repeating the pattern. So what we need is for carbon to be, its molar mass is 12.01. This one's 1 1.008. Nitrogen's 14.01. And then oxygen is 16.00. Now, I would recommend, actually, that you memorize those uh, molar masses. And you probably kind of got them down anyways because we've written them so many times. But you notice how much time I save by just not going back to the periodic table now? Right, so that's kind of what I'm saying. It'll save you a lot of time if you just memorize about five or six of them, really: carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, fluorine, and maybe uh, chlorine or um, sulfur. Right, sulfur's 32, and then chlorine's 35.45. And I don't really have much more memorized than that. But just knowing those, it saves myself a lot of time from having to look stuff up all the time. So we'll go to 63.56 divided by 12.01 and I'll make sure I did my calculation right so I get 5.292 it was 5.2925 right 5.29225 but I'll just I'll just call this a 3 down here it's four significant figures and then I'm going to go 1.008 uh, divided by oh sorry yeah 6. Point, sorry 6. Point 6.00 divided by 1.008, and I'll get uh, 5.9524. Make sure I did that right. 6 divided by 1, yep, 5.9524, yep. And then I'm going to do 9.27, 9.27. I'm going to divide by 14.01. And I'll get 0 0.6617. And then the last one is uh, 21.17 divided by 16. 1.3231. And then we need the ratio, right? So which one are you going to divide by, right? Well, it's going to be the smallest one, right? So I will use, uh, let's say, this one. And let me highlight that. And I'm going to divide by, right, 0 0.6617. I'm just going to show it once up here, right? So I know this is 1. That's exact. And then I'll go ahead and do the other calculations. 
So 5.2923 divided by 0.6617. So that's 7.998. Oh, well, that's good. All right, that's close to 8. And then I'm going to do 5.9524. Oops, I forgot the decimal there. 5.9524. Divided by 0.6617, and I get 8.996, right? 8.996. And then the last one hopefully will come out to be a whole number, and then I'll be almost done. So then I'll go 1.3231, right? Divided by 0.6617, like that. And I'll get exactly 2. So what that means, right? These. These numbers are roughly 8.00, 9.0, my pen's dying, 9.00, um, 1, and 2. So my formula, again, writing it in the order that it's presented to you, because that's normally the order that the formulas come in. C, H, N, and O, and I'm going to have C, 8, H, 9, N, 1, and O, 2, like that. And that's the empirical formula for acetaminophen. Again, you know, if you don't have a table in front of you, and I did show you a couple little shortcuts there, right? Since you're always dividing by the molar mass, check the first one and then just do all the calculations. When you say ratio up here, you're going to take the number divided by this one and then just divide them all out. I would start by showing this one first to remind yourself that's the one that's one, and then you go ahead and do the rest of them. I got whole numbers, okay? So we'll do the one for ethyl butyrate. <coughs> And I think, um, yeah, I had a couple extra examples, but I'm just going to do two. We'll do ethyl butyrate. I'll get back to my blue pen, although I like the orange. All right, C uh, is 62.04, and H is 10.47, and O is 27.55. So this is what I want you to do. Is you're going to set up the table, right, and, and put everything in place like you're getting ready to do the calculation. And then calculate the moles, and, and then we'll stop and we'll chat and we'll see how it goes. Okay, see where you get to. Okay, so uh, this is what your table should look like roughly. I divide by molar masses. I use the same molar masses as above. So I have my grams and I have my, mol my moles, right? And then I need to do the ratio. So uh, I'm going to divide by oxygen, and I was going to talk to you a little bit about that. So one. 0.7219. So in many of these kinds of problems, uh, elements that show up are really common are carbon and hydrogen. Uh, they are generally not what you're dividing by. So just, just as a thought as you do these problems or you see it on an exam, if you end up dividing by carbon and hydrogen in your calculation, like trying to get an answer, you should look at like what your calculations look like you should check your calculations because generally speaking you're not dividing by carbon or hydrogen it's usually something else and so if you have carbon and hydrogen and some other element it's usually that other element that you're going to end up dividing by and if it doesn't turn out that way go back and check your calculations okay so i'll put the, i'll put the ratios up here in a second What is the molar mass of ethyl butyrate? The answer I found is 116.085 atomic mass units. Okay, 
is. 